This is Frank DeMora giving you a note that earlier today I posted a video concerning the Zechariah prophecy where Jerusalem was going to become this burdensome stone and as a result in the end days everyone would be coming against Israel as you can see there below in red. So not only has Jerusalem become that burdensome stone and we're seeing little by little that the world is coming against Israel Today, after I posted what was going on in Jerusalem, and I asked you to keep on the watch because we're going to see more of the same kind of things taking place, the violence, there was another incident today, and I'll let CBS give you the highlights of it. And this came over the Yahoo News attempted Jerusalem knife attack, assailant shot dead, police. This was only six hours ago. Israeli police say they foiled a new stabbing attack in Jerusalem and have killed the assailant. This comes as Israel has begun to deploy hundreds of troops. Former Middle East negotiator Aaron David Miller joins us now by phone. Aaron, thanks for being with us. First of all, what's your reaction to this? And secondly, is there anything that the United States can do here to help ease some tensions? Well, for, first of all, um, you know, I've, I've watched and participated, analyzed, studied, helped to broker Israeli Palestinian agreements and failed more often times and succeeded over a 30, 30 year period. This is a naturally a tragic uh, manifestation of a, just another ebb and flow in a, a conflict half a century old, if not, if not longer. This, this particular form of violence is highly personalized, it's driven by social media, it's probably highly unorganized. It's not yet a first or second intifada where you had sustained uprisings and leaderships on on, on both sides committed on one hand to promoting it and the other on the other to, to try trying to figure out a way to quell it or, or, or break it but it could yet morph into that uh, the good news is that, that I think neither Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu nor a Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas want this to escalate the problem is and they're, and they're continuing their security cooperation uh, which is extremely important the bad news is that it's extremely difficult for leaders uh, to somehow uh, magically or quickly uh, tamp down violence, which um, is, is being driven and may be encouraged by groups like uh, Islamic Jihad, uh, Jihad and Hamas, but it's largely confined to Jerusalem and to other areas of, 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 of Israel, and it's going to either play itself out, burn itself out, or it's going to escalate. You know, I, I, having recommended to half a dozen secretaries of state over the years whether or not they should go to the Middle East, Woody Allen said that 90% uh, of life is showing up. It's, it's not. It's showing up at the right time. John Kerry needs to husband his currency, uh, given his previous inabilities to produce, and make sure that if, if, if in essence, he's going to launch a mediation effort to try to tamp things down, that he has a reasonable chance to think. The last thing we need right now uh, for American policy in the Middle East is to have a Secretary of State go out there, spend time trying to get something... Uh, some calm, and then uh, hours after he leaves, or days, this thing erupts again. Aaron, uh, given that the, as you point out, and our reporter Elizabeth Palmer also pointed out, that the Israelis and the Palestinian Authority are still sharing security uh, agreements uh, in terms of, or at least they're sharing intelligence about what is happening there on the ground, but we saw uh, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas at the UN a few weeks ago uh, sort of saying that he was stepping away uh, from the peace process or he was uh, threatening to step away from the peace process. In your estimation, will we ever see a two-state solution? You know, I got a 35-year-old daughter and a 32-year-old son. I, I'm, I'm not going to say never. I mean, you know, I occupy a tiny space for a tiny period of time on this planet, and I'm not going to mortgage anybody's future, let alone my own kids for the Israelis and Palestinians by saying never. But I gotta tell you, I, I haven't abandoned hope, but I have given up my illusion. And unless you have Israeli and Palestinian, you need three things, guys. You give me these three things, I'll give you a peace process that could actually produce an agreement and a two state Number one, you need leaders who are masters of their prisoners, of, of their political houses, not prisoners of them, and who are willing to risk. Number two, you need ownership. You know, Larry Summers said that in the history of the world, nobody ever washed a rental car. Well, it's profound philosophical advice. You don't wash rental cars because you care only about what you own. And neither the Israelis or Palestinians have invested in this process to own it. And finally, let's be clear, you will need a third party, a mediator, that has the will and the skill in order to do serious Arab-Israeli diplomacy. And I worked for half a dozen Secretary of State the last time you had will and skill, was Bush 41 
LeBron and Jim Baker. And the reality is right now you have an Obama administration that has very little street, very little street cred in this region, and particularly not a lot of credibility with the Israelis or the Palestinians. Aaron Miller, uh, the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. We thank you very much, sir. Always a pleasure, guys. Take care. So with that, when he was talking about somebody being able to mediate, well, he should have read the Bible, and if he didn't, I hope he does, because we are told that there's going to be a covenant that is going to be confirmed by the Antichrist. We see that in Daniel chapter 9. And so we do know that down the line here, there is going to be a peace agreement that will be signed, but it's going to be a horrendous event. It's not going to be a good event because the outcome will mean by the confirmation of this new agreement, the seven-year agreement, that's what Daniel shows us, that that's going to start the seven-year tribulation. And then three and a half years from the covenant that is going to be confirmed by the Antichrist, that's when the Antichrist will go into the temple and defile that temple and claim that he is God. And at that point, get everybody to receive the mark in the right hand or the forehead, as it says in Revelation chapter 13. So the events that are playing out in Israel right now, very, very significant. And I'll keep you up to date as the news keeps pouring in. This is Frank DeMora from the End Times Research Ministry.